This video is going to cover the topic of creating triangles. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for the video is how do we ensure that three side lengths will form a triangle? And as we know, triangles have three sides, but have you ever stopped to think about how those three sides come together to make a triangle? So here we have just a basic triangle. It happens to be scaling. It has three different side lengths, and the side lengths here are four, five, and seven, and that nicely makes a nice complete triangle. Nothing unusual there. But what if I tried to make a triangle with the sides four, five, and 10 instead? What would happen if I made that triangle? So let's see. Let's call the base here 10, and I'm not using units, but we'll just say 10 units. And on the left, I'll draw something that approximates four. And on the right, I'll draw something that approximates our five units. And when I do that, you can see that the lines won't actually connect, so this will not make a triangle. So my first example made a nice triangle, no worries. The second one, oh, I didn't label that. The second one did not make a triangle. What about this one? What if we have side lengths three, three, and six? And again, I'll use that base as the largest one, so I'll go with six along the bottom here. And on my left and right, those will both be my side lengths of three. And it's clear that these don't meet either, right? These are my three, and I have a thought, right? Maybe I could kind of change the angle so that if I kind of pull this down a little further, pull this down a little further, maybe eventually they would meet. The problem is when they meet, they would be six units and they would just be flat. So this is not a triangle either. I'll show you some examples of the side lengths that would make a triangle and some that don't. And we're gonna see if we can figure out what the rule is, what has to be true about our side lengths. So take a look at these lists. As you're writing them down, see if you can find what's, um, what the triangles have in common that make triangles and what the numbers have in common that don't make triangles. So take a minute to kind of notice what you see in these examples because there's a rule about triangles and in all of the examples that make the triangles, the rule works. So maybe you noticed that if I added the two small numbers here, four plus seven, I get 11, and 11 is bigger than the other side, which is eight. On this one, my two small sides are 12 and 15, and when I add those together, I get 27, which is bigger than the third leg. Same. And if I look at my third example, five and eight, well, that makes 13, and that is larger than nine. On the other side, if I try the same thing, right, I have the two small sides are two and four, which is six. That is not bigger than 10. So that is not bigger than 10. Let's say, so let's kind of show that by saying that that is not true. And on the second one, right, six and three makes nine. Is nine bigger than 25? Well, definitely not. And on my third choice, I have 10 and 13. Now that adds up exactly to 23, but is 23 bigger than 23? It is not. And that's our rule. The fancy term for this is the triangle inequality theorem, which makes sense because we're talking about something being greater than, right? Not equal to. And it says the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be larger than, greater than, the measure of the third side. So knowing that, do these three sides make a triangle? Think for yourself, right? Seven, 16, and eight. Does that make a triangle? Knowing that two sides, right, must be greater than the third side. And I hope you thought for yourself that the answer there would be no, right? If I add seven plus eight, I get 15, and 15 is not, no way, is 15 greater than 16. So this is not a triangle. What about 10, 11, and 20? Think for yourself, does this make a triangle? Test it out, see what happens when you add the two shorter sides, and if it is larger than the third. And hopefully you see that yes, it does, because if I add 10 and 11, 
I get 21, and 21 is bigger than 20. So it works. And if we know this rule to be true, then we can also use this rule to determine a possible side length for a third leg if we are looking to make a triangle and we only know what two of our sides need to be. So what if we have a triangle with a side length of 8 and another side length of 3, and we're trying to figure out what this third leg could be? Well, we can use this rule to help us figure out what it could be, and there are actually more than, there's more than one possibility. If, as it looks like in this picture, 8 is our long side, then 3 plus something else has to be greater than 8, right? You can see why they call this the inequality theorem. And so if I solve for this, I see that x could be anything bigger than 5. So x could be, could be, I'll write could be, because we don't know. x could be 6, x could be 5 and a half, x could be 5 and 1 tenth. And under this example, right, we're assuming that 8 is our long side. So I'm not going to say it's anything bigger than 8, right, but it could be anything kind of in that range. However, with those same two side lengths, I could actually think, oh, maybe those, that 3 and 8, are the short sides. So maybe we're looking for something here, which has to be smaller than what we get when we add the two together, right? Because the two together must be larger than the third side. So let's call this maybe x, right? And we know that it has to be less than the two sides put together. So of course that means x has to be less than 11. And that gives us a bunch of op op possible options, right? So maybe it could be 10 or 9 or 10 and a half, right? Fractions and decimals are certainly available as well. But to answer the entire question, we have to think, all right, well, both of these things are possibilities, right? Maybe, as I had on my previous slide, x has to be bigger than 5, but here on this slide, I see that x has to be less than 11. So I have my two restraints, right? It has to be bigger than 5, it has to be less than 11. So I'm actually going to write this as an inequality. I'm going to put x in the middle, and I know that x has to be bigger than 5, so I'm going to show that by saying it's bigger than 5, but it's less than 11. And this can take a few tries to kind of work through. We're probably not going to have a perfect handle on it after just this one example, but I'm going to leave you with just that one example, and we're going to work with it more in class together. Instead, I'm going to leave you with a few um, side lengths, and I want you to tell me whether or not they make a triangle. So take a look at each of these and then just write down beside it whether yes, it makes a triangle or no, it does not make a triangle. Keeping in mind the rule that states the sum of any two sides of a triangle has to be greater than the side that's left, the third side. So keep that in mind as you are deciding whether or not these in fact make triangles. And remember the essential question for the video was how do we ensure that three side lengths will form a triangle? The theorem, the rule, helps us to know how to do that, but we'll do some practice together, of course, to make sure that this all makes sense um, when we're in class. So bring your notes and bring the answers to these quick questions at the end.